And then Paul, you know, you could read his story. In Acts chapter 9 is where we actually see the event when he was on the road to Damascus. And he's just retelling the story to King Agrippa because he's technically he's on trial. And he has to defend himself from the charges because he wants to go to Rome. God told him to go to Rome. But there's a lot of steps along the way. And he retells his story a couple of times. And this is in near the end of the book of Acts. There's only 28 chapters. Here we are in 26. And he's talking to King Agrippa. And he says, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Anybody here before you were saved mock Christians? Yeah, me too. My mom was the one that was witnessing to me. And, you know, I just didn't want to hear what she had to say. I called her a Jesus freak. Little did I know I would be leading the Jesus freak someday, right? <laughs> Funny how that works. God had given her a word through her brother, who was also who was a pastor. He said, when you think of your son, picture him with his hands lifted up, worshiping the Lord. And at the time, I was a bouncer in a bar on the Fort Lauderdale Strip. And you wouldn't want to go to that bar, I promise you that. So, I mean, that's about as far from where I was as what he was telling her to pray for me. And again, you know, ironic, then the music that I was learning in the world turned into worship music for the Lord. You know, God could do anything. He's turned around God. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He's the way maker. Yeah. Woo! It's the reason that song is so popular. We pray it. Even when I don't see it yet, I'm witnessing. I'm believing God that they're going to have a turnaround. They're going to meet somebody that's going to shake them up in a good way and point them in the right direction. Mm. So I th thought I had to do a lot of things to tear down the church. Verse 10, this I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. I'm a murderer. Trying to snuff out this new movement that was against the Bible. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. Being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. And while thus occupied, on my way to the foreign city called Damascus, with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, the phone rang. <laughs> I didn't recognize the ring either. And it didn't go into voicemail. It popped out, and everybody knew something was going on. Like, they all saw the light. They didn't all hear the voice, right? Hmm. Along that road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, which means they all saw it, right? I heard a voice speaking to me. Hello, Paul, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> How's the signal? <laughs> pretty bright, pretty loud and clear. And it was saying right in my Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. It's hard for you to fight what I want you to do. You're out killing Christians. Clearly, God had tried to speak to Paul, still Saul at this point, and he had been blocking that out. He was there when Stephen was martyred. And I have a feeling when he says, I have this thorn in my flesh, you could debate that another day we'll talk about. Was that a physical sickness or could it have just been the memories of all the things that he did in this stage of his life prior that, you know, you could say that would be the devil reminding him. It would be if it's condemnation. But if it's not condemnation and it's just the conviction of the Lord saying, that's not me anymore. I'm a new person. I'm going to go the complete other way. And now I'm going to advance God's kingdom. And I think Paul did a pretty good job of that. I don't know about you, but I'd give him a good grade. He's definitely an inspiration to me as a marketplace guy. He was a tent maker. Didn't have to be. Pretty good, right? He wanted to still be with the lost and not float up into some church bubble and only ever be around Christians all the time because you can lose a little bit of your edge. All you folks that are out in the workforce, you know, it's a pretty cold, cruel world out there. They need the Lord. So I said, well... I know it's hard to kick against the pricks, but who were you? you? Your name didn't come up on the caller ID. Who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. 
But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. We don't like that one. We want all of the, the revelation now, and then I'll put a spreadsheet together, and I'll size it up, and I'll do my risk analysis. I'm leaking a little bit here. Spreadsheets are us. <laughs> Thankfully, Trisha helped me get delivered from that one. <laughs> and from the things I will yet reveal to you. I'm revealing some of it now, but not all of it. You just keep being obedient and doing what I tell you to do, and you'll get the rest of it. And I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Whoa, you're sending me to the Gentiles? I have this high rank as a Jewish official. Those people are unclean. Well, you're going to change your mind about that, Paul. Well, when your name is Paul, you're still Saul here. <laughs> to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. Anybody? That was you? You're not Jewish and your eyes got opened up. We got grafted in to this amazing root of Abraham's seed, of Jesus, everything that, that they had as the chosen people, we are now in that root. We got grafted in. The wild root got grafted in. Thank you, Lord, and thank you that this man was obedient and he answered the call. He gave a dangerous yes, and that's all he's telling Agrippa. It's like, hey, you know, what would you have done? You hear a voice from heaven, you get knocked down on the road, you're blinded, and you could just hear him. And he's telling me, this is going to be my assignment. I'm going to go to all those unbelievers that never even heard about it because we never tried to talk to them because they were unclean. And now you're asking me to go to the most reviling people we know. Yep. Dangerous yes. And from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So it's not works anymore. Now it's going to be by faith. That was a hard paradigm shift, wasn't it? 